Yo, what up guys? Corey Sandman Sandhagen here. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to break down Strickland versus Duplessis. I really like this fight. I had Duplessis winning uh, two, three, four for sure. Five, you know, anytime it's just kind of a brawl slugfest, you kind of got to flip a coin to see who wins that fight. And, you know, the judges are going to score that however it, they care to score that. So definitely Duplessis, I had winning two, three, four. Five up in the air, one definitely Strickland. I know that you guys had a lot of feelings about it too. I personally think that Duplessis fought in a way that was perfect stylistically against someone like Strickland. Let's get into the why. All right, guys, first things first, let's talk about what Strickland does really well because I have been, you know, maybe studying would be a little bit of a boastful world word, but I have been kind of thinking about Strickland's style a lot more, and after watching him fight Duplessis, I learned a lot more about his style. So, one, the Philly shell, I'm not going to act like I know a ton about, okay? Just because, you know, like I like to stay in my wheelhouse. I don't want to be one of those guys that starts talking about some stuff that I don't fully, fully know. I do fully, fully know a decent amount of things in a lot of areas, but the Philly Shell, I don't do. I don't know the intricacies of it, so I'm not gonna talk about it. What I will say, though, is there are a lot of questions in the kickboxing community and just in the MMA community in general about how Sean Strickland is able to fight in a Philly Shell and still check kicks and not get his leg chopped. Because in a Philly Shell, you do have to use this shoulder to cover your face from overhands and rights and stuff. But when you do that, obviously you leave your legs super exposed and you can't really check because checking like this obviously doesn't make any sense. So after watching a lot more Strickland over you know, the last couple of weeks, what I'm realizing and the reason that Strickland is able to check these kicks is one, he stands a little bit more square than like a typical boxing Philly shell, but his stance is super narrow. Like that's a pretty interesting and unique thing about Strickland style outside of the way that he uses his guard is that his feet are really narrow to each other. Why this is important is because there's a reason that Muay Thai fighters fight with their legs really close and why boxers fight with their legs really long. When you're fighting Thai fights or whatever and you need to use your legs, if your legs are close to each other, you can pick it up and throw kicks really quickly because you're already going to be pretty on balance whenever you lift up a leg. It's different than if I'm standing wide and I go to lift up a leg, a lot of movement needs to happen in order for me to keep my balance because I have to put all of my weight over this leg and I have to obviously balance like that. So that's a really interesting thing that I got to kind of learn about Strickland's stance a little bit. When he is a lot more narrow like this, Checking kicks is super like available, okay? Boom, it's not very hard. When you're wide like this, checking kicks is doable, but a lot of the time, like I said, you're lifting, you can't fully be on balance. You are, you're lifting, you have to rock your weight all the way back, and if you lift a little, you're falling back into your stance. So it typically doesn't work if you wanna check kicks when you're real wide like this. So that was pretty cool about Strickland style. Another interesting piece about Strickland's style, which of course everybody knows, is he throws really good straight punches, okay? He doesn't telegraph his jab very, hardly at all. He throws it, boom, there's no load, there's no pump, there's no like recoil. Everything is just from here to the target, which is really unique and like uh, definitely took the guy a really, really long time to learn, okay? Let's talk about Duplessis. It's a lot less sexy of a style, you know? It's a little bit more off balance. It's a little bit more chaotic looking. Um, Duplessis got away with it in this fight, and this is why I'm calling this fight, you know, like if we're playing rock, paper, scissors, I think Duplessis is the rock to Strickland scissors, only because in order to fight someone that is a little bit more chaotic, and what makes it chaotic is one, like the amount of firepower that's happening behind a lot of those shots. Like Duplessis dipping and throwing really hard hands. He's like stepping in real big, throwing really hard kicks. Outside of all of that, he's moving this main target, which is typically our face, into really strange spots, okay? And the reason that that was really difficult for Strickland to deal with is because Strickland throws, like I said, really phenomenal straight punches. In the beginning, in the first round, he was throwing a lot of straights, keeping Duplessis off of him. Everything was straight, okay? Duplessis, when he would attack, 
is moving his head out of that straight line. Elias, can I use you real quick? He's moving his head out of this straight line. And the reason that that can be just incredibly difficult for a guy like Strickland to have to deal with, you'll be Strickland, shell up, is if your main attacks are your jab and your straight right hand, and I put my head over here, you don't really have that attack anymore. If I put my head here, you don't really have that attack anymore. If I bomb kicks and lean a little bit away, you don't really have that attack anymore. So Duplessis, whose style is pretty much based off of just blitzing in, or at least in this circumstance it was, if I blitz in on a guy that can only throw straight things, I'm gonna have a lot of success if I just keep moving my target outside of those things. So if you jab at me, and I put my head here, not a problem. You jab at me, and I put my head here, not a problem. You straight at me, and I put my head here, not a problem, okay? That's really important because Strickland doesn't step too far outside of the wheelhouse of, you know, ones and twos as far as his attacks for the most part, okay? I don't, I don't wanna talk too much shit on Strickland because if I see this fool at the apex, I know that he'll definitely punch me in the face, okay? Uh, but, in order to fight someone that has this uh, like kind of chaotic style where they're moving their target a lot as they're throwing punches, you have to be a little bit more dynamic in the angles of attacks that you can throw. So what I mean and a good analogy that you guys can use is if me and Elias are sword fighting, okay? Imagine Elias has a sword and it's not a samurai sword, it's a fencing sword. It just has a pointy end to it. It doesn't have like a slicing to left and right thing to it. I feel pretty confident in my ability to beat that more than a sword that he can like throw like this and cut me in half. Again, the reason that's important is because your jab and your cross are pretty much your fencing swords. I can just stab Elias here. My punches go in a manner that only go in straight lines. And that's good for quickness and it's good against certain, you know, types of styles of fighter. But if someone's throwing their head into weird spots, I want to throw sometimes more round things, which is what Strickland started to do in about round four, round five maybe. He started to go jab overhand because this isn't straight anymore. Now I have to use my samurai sword and slice through this area. Same thing with knees and uh, kicks and all of that stuff. If Elias is putting his head here, my kick on just the nature of the way that I throw this around kick goes at an angle that covers a lot of this space, okay? If I throw a straight kick, again, we're talking just stabs, I'm using my fencing sword. When people are putting their head on the outside of the shoulders and being really awkward with their heads, I wanna slice through spaces instead of try to stab spaces. I hope that that makes sense. That makes sense kind of, okay? So, if I'm Strickland and I get to fight Duplessis again, Anytime Duplessis dips his head, blitzes in, because he doesn't do it with the tightest guard, he doesn't do it with the best footwork, he kind of is off balance. Again, when you have that much firepower and that much experience, you can get away with it. But if I get to fight Duplessis again, and I'm Strickland, when he puts his head on the outside, I'm developing things that slice through, okay? If he puts his head over here, my jab isn't gonna work. I could throw 1,000 jabs, it's not gonna work. I'm gonna throw my hook instead, boom, hit him. Again, I slice through this space. It's also a really good idea to do this against types of wrestlers or shorter opponents. When they go to change their level, I wanna slice through this space because it covers a lot more ground than like a straight punch, which again, only goes in one direction, okay? So that was pretty much, honestly, the tail of the tape, just kind of in general. Uh, Duplessis was just chaotic, moved his target to things where you can't get hit by straight stuff, and Strickland didn't have, you know, like, like the dynamic enough tool set in order to capitalize on being able to make Duplessis, you know, like pay for him kind of being a little bit reckless when he steps in. Again, I'm trying not to talk too much shit, uh, but I think that they'd both agree, you know, Duplessis is a little bit chaotic, and Strickland throws a lot of really awesome straight stuff, but Duplessis kind of had the rock to Strickland scissors in this fight. Um, a couple things I do want to talk about though that were awesome, and if you're like not into martial arts, maybe you know, like you've listened 
probably for long enough by now. Uh, but I want to talk about just a couple of the technical things that happened that were really cool too. Um, one of them being the switch against the wall. Is this thing going to keep us in frame? One moment, please. All right, cool. Welcome back. All right, so I want to talk about just a, this in particular because I think that this is a really important piece in, you know, like wrestling and jiu-jitsu bridging the gap between MMA, okay? So when Elias is in on a head outside single of any kind, it was a little bit of a different situation, but we'll just start from here. If he's from this position, okay, in wrestling, sometimes this can be a little bit difficult occasionally, especially if I don't have like weight down on his shoulder here. But if I start to go here, Elias can start to mess with me. He can really start to like go behind me and do all kinds of stuff and like jujitsu and all of that stuff, okay? So when I start to hit a switch and imagine that there's a wall behind me, the only direction that Elias really gets to go in is that direction uh, towards your head. So if I'm here and go ahead again, Elias, like do it how you would do it, boom. Here I'm gonna probably start to get my back taken, maybe. You know, like I still might have a crack at it, but again, Elias tried to take my back. Like I'm probably maybe gonna end here, okay? When Strickland had this switch and the wall is behind you, and this is important for you guys that are fighters and you guys wanna learn more and all of that stuff. The wall is behind me. When I'm hitting my switch, Elias doesn't get to go in the direction that is the only one that's really available. So as I start to switch, he kind of has no choice as to either bail on this grip or stay connected to me and just let me switch him, boom, and dump him here, okay? Or if we're here, uh, step over my leg. Or if we're here and I start to go, Elias can kind of bail and untangle himself a little bit, boom, and then this typically ends in both of us building up and getting to our feet, okay? But that's a really important thing. That's something that is really unique in the MMA world. Of course, you could still hit a switch in wrestling, but in the MMA world, especially when you're against the cage, it can be a really, really good option when guys aren't putting their head, like say we're against the uh, cage again, uh, be on a double. If Elias is on a double here, obviously like I can still start to hunt for it if the wall is behind me, but if he's only on a single and on one of my legs and the wall is here, like this is a no brainer, like super easy move for you guys to be able to do, okay? So make sure that you guys are understanding that against the wall, different types of wrestling maneuvers can happen and hitting a switch against the wall when someone has a head outside single is definitely a really good option. All right guys, so the other technique that I thought was a really awesome one that happened in that fight is, again, going back to this idea where Strickland stands really narrow. In my opinion, the reason that his style has kind of gone in that direction is again, he likes using this Philly shell. With a typical Philly shell, if you stand wide, they're gonna eat your leg up. With a more narrow Philly shell, which again is super unique to Strickland and he definitely has more information on it than I do. But if I'm narrow, checking kicks is super easy. I just balance myself by doing this instead of being wide and really having to balance myself like this. But Again, the way there's always a counter to everything. So if uh, you'll be Strickland, narrow stance in a shell, uh, even he's actually probably even a little, yeah. So he's like real, real tall. But it can be really easy for me to get my hands all the way around the hips when I shoot in on a double, which is exactly what Duplessis did. He shot a couple high crotches too, which were cool. But I thought the ones that really made a lot of sense in this fight were Duplessis shoots in, boom, is able to like fully connect his hands almost. I don't know if he did or not, um, but essentially wraps up the entire legs and takes him down, okay? That's different than if Elias has a more traditional stance where he's a little bit longer. When I shoot in, I don't get to have my grip as easy because his hips are a lot wider. I definitely still can, don't get me wrong, but it's a lot easier for Elias to make himself really wide here and start to defend so that I can't lock my hands versus if he's narrow and I'm like way ahead in the starting line, like I'm gonna be, like try to not let me lock my hands. Like very, very difficult when you're in a really narrow stance. So good on Duplessis for doing that. All right, cool guys, so that was that fight. Again, I thought it was a really in intriguing one just because I do think that Duplessis brought exactly what he needed to do to beat a style like Strickland. It highlighted a lot of things as far as, you know, straight punches being more of a fencing attack. Not the best for when guys are moving their target a lot. And then, of course, having in your head that if people are moving their head a lot, you don't throw straight things that don't take up a ton of space. 
you throw the round things that clear a lot of space, just like a samurai sword would if you were chopping someone down. So again, make sure that you guys like and subscribe. Peace, love you, bye.